Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm instructor Jim Pytel, and this is a quick demonstration of motor connection diagrams. This lecture operates under the assumption that viewers watch the motor connection diagrams lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. You recall, motor connection diagrams illustrate how to configure a motor as a Y or a delta and whether the motor in question is or is not suitable for dual voltage operation. Manufacturers offer a limited range of three-phase AC motor options, normally restricting themselves to the following six types. Three-lead Y-configured motors, three-lead delta-configured motors, six-lead motors, which can be configured as Ys or deltas, nine-lead Y-configured motors, which can be configured for high or low voltage operation, nine-lead delta-configured motors, which can also be configured for low or high voltage operation, and lastly, 12-lead motors, which can be configured as Ys or deltas for either low or high voltage operation. Six base types effectively gives us 12 different options, with 12-lead motors being the most flexible and, coincidentally, the most expensive. The intention of today's exercise is to read and interpret a couple example motor connection diagrams and set them up for use. Let's take a dip into the box of motors and see what we find. First up is a quarter horsepower Dayton motor with the following motor nameplate information, including a motor connection diagram on the right hand side. It looks like this is a nine lead motor. Judging from the four, five, six connection in the low voltage configuration, this is most likely a nine lead Y configured motor. Let's use an ohm meter to verify this hypothesis. You recall, nine lead Y configured motors consist of six windings, three independent and isolated with both ends accessible, and three permanently bonded together in a Y configuration with only one end of each winding accessible. Windings 1, 4, 2, 5, and 3, 6 can be positioned as needed, whereas windings 7, 8, and 9 are a set of conjoined triplets. Ordinarily, three-phase AC motors are considered balanced loads, and unless damaged, each winding should theoretically have the same resistance. An ohmmeter demonstrates winding 1, 4 has a resistance of roughly 20 ohms. Similarly, an ohmmeter demonstrates winding 2, 5 also has a resistance of roughly 20 ohms. Finally, an ohmmeter demonstrates winding 3.6 also has a resistance of roughly 20 ohms. It looks like the isolated windings are indeed roughly identical. Let's check the fixed configuration of three windings. The central Y connection isn't accessible, so we have to check these windings as paired sets, 7 to 8, 8 to 9, and 9 back to 7. An ohmmeter between terminals 7 and 8 sees winding 7 and 8 in series. The ohmmeter sees a resistance of roughly 40 ohms, which is consistent with a series combination of two identical 20 ohm windings. Similarly, an ohmmeter between terminals 8 and 9 sees winding 8 and 9 in series. As previously, the ohmmeter sees a resistance of roughly 40 ohms, which is consistent with a series combination of two identical 20 ohm windings. Finally, an ohmmeter between terminals 9 and 7 sees winding 9 and 7 in series. As previously, the ohmmeter sees a resistance of roughly 40 ohms, which is again consistent with a series combination of two identical 20 ohm windings. This is indeed a 9 lead Y configured motor. Let's use the connection diagram to set it up in low voltage configuration. The motor connection diagram on the motor nameplate specifies a low voltage YY configuration requires the leads 4, 5, and 6 to be tied together, forming another Y. Then 1 is tied to 7, 2 is tied to 8, and 3 is tied to 9, forming an almost overlapping double Y in parallel with one another. Primary lines L1, L2, and L3 will be connected to conjoined terminals 1, 7, 2, 8, and 3, 9, where swapping any two applied phase sequences would reverse rotational direction. Let's use an ohmmeter to check our work. As presently configured, we have access to the conjoined terminals 1, 7, 2, 8, and 3, 9, where each point of the Y is essentially two identical windings in series in parallel with another two identical windings in series. Point 1, 7 to 2, 8 is winding 1, 4 in series with winding 5, 2, in parallel with winding 7 in series with winding 8. If each of these windings is 20 ohms, each series path is a 40 ohm path. Two 40 ohm paths in parallel is 20 ohms. An ohmmeter between conjoined terminal 17 and 28 does indeed see a resistance of roughly 20 ohms as we might expect. The same observations can be made about points 28 to 39 and 39 back to 17. An ohmmeter between conjoined terminals 28 and 39 does indeed see a resistance of roughly 20 ohms, as does an ohmmeter between conjoined terminals 39 and 17 as we might expect. I'm reasonably confident we properly wired this 9 lead Y configured motor in the low voltage YY configuration. All right, that wasn't too hard, was it? In summary, follow the motor connection diagram exactly as directed. If you want confirmation of your work, use an ohmmeter to check it. 